unless you are not then happy, that's when you then move to the area manager, from the area manager, middle manager, up to the uh, most high level in Gauteng. Okay. But what we're currently experiencing, it's people shooting straight to the higher office. Mm. You are not helping yourself, you are delaying, actually delaying yourself. Because ideally, the people who need to resolve your issue are the ones at the area level. Mm. Hi, welcome to the show, Kalina Ke Rase Mishi Mothala, and it's a great pleasure to have you here again. Um, Renale, a guest today, who's coming for the first quarter of the year, Ke uh, Aussi Ndombi from ESCOM. We're going to get our update, star what's happening go ESCOM once again for the first quarter of 2024. And Ke Ndombi, as I said, but before we even get to that, I would like you guys to please share like and subscribe to our videos so that we can be able to produce more of this content and reach as many people as we can as uh, don't be someone someone put on me and greetings to all the listeners at home thank you are you well i'm very well oh, okay. very well yes and let me ask you about christmas and the compliment of the new year Yes. And Azubut is still allowed to say it at the end of February. No, I think now it has expired. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yes. Yeah, um, as the first quarter, as per our relationship that every quarter will be getting something. Uh, yes. The first quarter of this year, um, I get what I call bad news from my side. But it's better yes. if you come from your, your own mouth. You know, yes. uh, what's happening? What announcement do you have for us? <laughs> I know, and... We're trying to push the information as much as possible. Okay. And uh, we actually started uh, last year. Okay. It is about uh, the closure of all the ESCOM offices. Okay. And it's not just a counting mm -hmm. decision, but it is a national decision. And it didn't only start now in December because when we prepared the customer education and the bulletins that we were distributing around and the awareness campaigns we were having, yeah. we were emphasizing to customers that as of December 2023, all our offices will be closed and uh, we were promoting what we call self-service. Okay. But I would like to also highlight mm. that it's not only uh, now a short uh, a space in a short yeah, a space yeah, of yeah. time that that's what closing that's the thing offices. They wanted to know. Yeah. Yes. That while of all of a sudden mm. that actually the offices closed during COVID. That's in 2020. Yes, in 2020. Oh, Even okay. for God, it was 2020. Yes. Yeah. That's 2020. So, are, are you saying that in the past three years that you now make an announcement that from December 2023 um, did you reopen or were you just servicing people out of grace or what has actually happened if you close the offices in, 20, uh, in 2020 during COVID? Yes, actually when we closed we did make a lot of announcements, a lot of engagements mm. and our customers gradually uh, started uh, getting used to the fact that they should use self-service channels yeah then after some time when if i can put it that way when everything came back to to normal, normal. after yeah. Yeah. COVID, then we started experiencing some influx into our offices hmm. where customers would come and especially with your equipment failure issues yes yes a whole lot of customers were coming hmm. for that and um the contact center, it was no longer that bad. Okay. In terms of the call volumes. All right. Unless uh, there is a, a major outage. Okay. Then, when time uh, goes on, we then mm. had to try and remind customers as they were walking in. Yes. To say, actually, you don't have to drive. To Take in. a taxi yes. or maybe drive. Yeah. You can save money, time, and energy by yeah. using the self-service channels. 
Okay. Because it's easy and it's quicker. All right. Now, now, what, what's, what's this self-service channels? What options do they have if they cannot to a, if they cannot go to a walk-in center? What, what options mm -hmm. do they have? First, mm -hmm. uh, you need to download uh, my customer services app. Okay. We call it my ESCOM customer services app. Okay. So it's, it's like an app, like any other an app, app that can just work on your Yes. Phone. Okay. You download it on your phone. Uh, for those using uh, smartphones, yeah, but it doesn't have to be smart. But <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes, and then you'll be able to access all the services, even the customers who are still uh, using conventional. Conventional, it's uh, the customers who are not on prepaid, yeah, but rather are receiving a bill, yeah, on a monthly basis. Yes, instead of waiting for us to come and do meter reading, mm. then you can uh, do it yourself and submit on a man, uh, monthly basis because ours is on a three months interval yes then you can report any uh, supply interruption and any other escom related issue that you have okay the second one which um customers love the most and mm. also ourselves because other than me being an escom employee i am also an escom customer yes. it's very user friendly okay it's the alfred chatbot all right now you don't have to get a smartphone mm. even the phones that people are calling it names yeah. <laughs> you know a basically as phone. long as you can get into yes. a browser yeah as long as yes. yeah. you just browse and just just type escom alfred yeah it will pop up then you go and click on the link then the chat will open and it has got different um sequence yeah. or guide to show you or like I ask you mm. leading questions mm. as you, you you want to report your electricity issue yeah but what is important when you're using Alfred mm. you need to always have your meter number or account number uh, if you are not an account holder know who's the account holder have your address and the contact numbers because okay. as you chat with Alfred you know uh, Alfred will ask those. Now everything must be in handy so that you, you are quick to mm. respond and then and get assisted. Okay, okay. Yes. We'll, we'll get to the Alfred one before you, um, but you can go to the third one in, okay. in telling us uh, the how, one, how we can contact. Yes, it is the contact center. Okay. And I know people um, have the perception of which somehow it is true. You do hold. Mm -hmm. For some time because oh, yes. the reason oh, for yes. holding mm. is that you know you are engaging with a warm body and mm. we are putting the customer at the center of our business yes of which it's one of mm. our drive mm -hmm. we call it customer centricity yeah now we need to assist you until you are satisfied as a customer we can't hang up yeah. until you are 100% satisfied for sure now obviously if as in Dom, I'm still busy with you uh, Emmanuel and then and other four agents or all our yeah. agents are still engaged with other emails yeah. and then the next person who's waiting online must say I've been holding yeah. forever oh, yes. but simply because we're still trying to assist the customer okay all right. and then but also what we did mm. is to add warm bodies mm. by using some of our local customer services agents okay in our respective local offices okay. to also take calls oh. meaning the contact center number that you are using to call it's unlike in the past where you will say Ish, i found and uh, i was taken through blue 14 plus yeah. you have an option yes when you call we ask you Mm. Like the voice prompt will ask yeah. you if you're calling from uh, Haute, Haute, also, Kumalang, yeah. which area, yeah. you know, and definitely you will be assisted uh, by a relevant uh, 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 service agent. Okay. Now, uh, 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 other than us just closing the office, there is a back office mm. that is dealing with systems and admin work, but the other stuff is taking calls, okay. which is then eliminating the 
contact center in flux right. that we would uh, experience yeah. in a normal basis when these offices are in operation. Oh, okay. Yes. No, I, I hear you. Um, I think after the break, we'll, we'll come to some questions because we had questions from people who have actually used Alfred uh, yes. online and they've probably experienced some few things on 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 the online activities. I'm not sure about the the actual app, the, the yes. ESCOM app, and then we'll, we'll come back to that. Maybe let's take a quick break right now and then we'll deal with those questions later. Okay. Hi and welcome back, Kalibizoke Rasemisi Mutala. And before we went for a break, we were talking about the issues of uh, ESCOM closing its doors and you won't be able to go go to the office in the ESCOM and launch your complaints or any other thing. You will have to use your online services to try and lay Alfred the app or call the service center. But now we have questions from some of our viewers who have sent in questions, Babarang, but we have issues with these platforms and Austin Dombi is going to explain most of these things to us on how they work, where are we going wrong, and how should other things the Krokahala should be worked upon or something that's like that. Susan Dombi, we are back. Yes. But uh, in a question from one of the the viewers and he is saying um, in short there is an issue with Alfred and Alfred is not user friendly. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure the customer uh, is coming from which perspective, mm. but I will mention uh, from experience in terms of the complaints or concerns mm. that we've received as we're doing customer education around using the self-service. Okay. For example, a person will say it's not user-friendly because mm. when they report, Alfred will ask you a lot of questions and because I said it's leading questions, if you don't have that information handy, mm. then it becomes a problem. Okay. Because you'll end up just uh, abandoning everything, yeah. yes, and just say, ah, you know, I'm leaving it. Mm. Now, one, when there is a supply interruption, mm. you are a, 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 a single customer or you are a group. Alfred is asking you a leading question once you say a uh, loss of supply. because. Yeah. Those pointers that are there on the screen of Alfred mm. already, it, it, it gives you a guide to say which one to uh, choose when you are reporting a fault. Okay. Now, when you are reporting a supply interruption, if it's only you, select the one that says only uh, me as a customer. All right. It also asks if it's there are other houses affected. If mm. there are other houses, rather go click that one. Yeah. And then okay. it will be able then to locate your fault accordingly. Okay. And then secondly, if you are not a customer, but you are a, a consumer, consumer. <laughs> because yes. by now, yeah, I believe the listeners are used to that language. Yeah. To say there's a customer, customer and a consumer. And a consumer, yeah. and a consumer it's an individual who is not buying or paying for electricity yeah and a customer is the one who mm. is loyal yeah then alfred will pick it up once you give a meter number mm. the system will pick it up yeah that you are not a a, a customer, a, a customer. Mm. also what i should highlight in the past i did explain uh, the difference between a no buyer yeah. and a low, low buyer. buyer yes 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 where we said a zero buyer mm. and a low buyer yeah now if you are a low buyer yes alfred will give you a message that says your fault have been locked yeah but you'll be uh, attended after 14 days because we'll investigate first oh it is because uh you will be falling under the low buyers Yes, yes, yes. And yes. we understand as a business that uh, we can't just paint everyone with the same paint when the system indicates that you're a low buyer, that we're not going to service you. 
Okay. In the past, we used to say that. Yeah. But now, we then go and investigate. Yes. To say what like is the result of yeah. you being a low buyer yeah because we understand that other people might be using alternative energy yeah they were just uh, buying electricity only maybe for, for light yes. as an example yes. yes yeah and then secondly it can be a customer from um uh, your rtp as an example yeah where it's a 20 amp and there's no geyser and yeah. everything that is consuming yeah. electricity a lot yeah now then we go and investigate if we find that everything is in order then we mm. assist you if uh, there's nothing in place everything is mm. just mixed mm. up mm. you are not a, a just a, a low buyer by default that's where we will then issue the fine and do and follow like the normal ESCOM processes. Okay. It's not that it's not user friendly, it's those pros and cons that people will believe, ah, using an uh, Alfred, okay. it's a challenge. So, so, because of that, that's one of my next question, the issue of the 14 days. Oh. So yes. 14 days says there is a, a, if I can use the word, a discrepancy in terms of usage and buying of your electricity. Yes. So we are going to investigate. First. As first. Yes. And then from the investigation, you're giving it a 14, 14 days, days. we should have concluded everything mm, in yes. 14 days in 14 okay. days yes. now 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 that makes sense yes. and then um uh, the question is what how are um, since you close now the, the centers people yes. who are applying to yes. escom for new installations or yes. probably upgrades what what do they do okay for upgrades a new application because obviously you you wouldn't be a customer mm. like an escom customer yes, with an yes. account number or meter number yeah and then and also for dpa the defer payment arrangement if maybe you had received a fine and so on okay those ones you won't uh, be able to get a, a assistance from alfred mm -hmm. you can do two things okay one of the links uh, when you open alfred uh, uh, like give you an option to update your details okay you can then click that link mm. and then and, and just uh, put everything whether it's a new application my name yeah. is so and so then okay. we will contact you then after yeah because all the details and all stories will be there yeah option two then you will make an appointment uh, with us in the offices then we will assist you how do we make that appointment that appointment we do have a customer bulletin okay. that uh, covers how to contact ESCOM in the entire Gauteng okay. for all our offices. Okay. And that bulletin, we created it purely for, for escalation process, which we will talk about it later on. Now there are contact numbers. Mm. It's a landline, it's a cell number, and an email address mm. of all customer relations officers in each and every office in our area of supply yeah. within Gauteng. Yes. But what is important is that you do not replace those contact details with the self-service service. channels. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. I, I, I would believe that if you try to jump the gun, when you go to trying to contact direct, it will ask you of reference numbers that should exactly. have come from either L Alfred or yes. Service Center. 100%. Okay, so that's the starting point. Yes. And then if all fails, you go to the contact details on your on your website to try and contact. Yes, it's either you, you will find the contact center. Yeah. Uh, if you are, you are not using these uh, other channels that I've yes. spoken about, and then and make that appointment, or mm. Oh, okay. If you have then, uh, okay, remember now it's three options. The contact yeah. center because you want to get a warm body. Yeah. Then uh, on Alfred, it's that link that says update your details. Or then you will use the customer bulletin that we have issued around the escalation process because it has got all the contact details mm -hmm. of our local uh, offices uh, leadership okay. where you will just make an appointment. You can send an email, make an appointment, we'll respond. Okay. Yes. Now that sounds that sounds super. And uh, in the next question, um, I think it's something that you spoke about. Now we have two more questions, and the first one I think is escalation. How yes. do you escalate the process? Okay. First, our turnaround time should be seven hours if you had reported the supply. Yeah. What I was even emphasizing uh, in another interview is that. 
we humbly ask our customers to bear with us and note this. Mm. If in a specific area there was a major outage mm. that is, is uh, affecting a, a large number of uh, customers and yeah. you are a single customer mm. that had perhaps reported maybe the previous day or seven hours ago okay. and you expect that with then by now you should have been uh, attended as a technician should have been dispatched yes, yes. please note that when a major outage unplanned outage mm. occurs we prioritize that oh okay. and then and attend the single calls at a later stage okay because we're working in terms of limited resources and also a priority let me make an example uh, <clears throat> a, a shopping center or a mall yeah. versus just one house yeah you know there are a lot of people that will be affected that yeah. you know with electricity supply disruption in yeah, a large mall. center yeah. than just one customer mm. we're not saying you are not important but yes. we would rather prefer to quickly yes mm. prioritize resolving that major outage then after the technician will go back to the work list okay yes because we dispatch our technicians with work order numbers and give them a work list and they will go to the individual customers okay now at least people must bear that in mind mm. and then before then you, you then escalate but the entry point of escalation should be the area office uh, customer services officer which is the uh, um, the person who's at the supervisor level yeah you cannot jump to the next person because even if you jump and go to the area manager mm. he or she is still going to go back to the area officer and ask what happened and the information will be the same okay now give the the, the area office a chain Mm -hmm. to just attend to your to your query or rather your escalation yeah and then unless you are not then happy that's when you then move to the area manager from the area manager middle manager up to the uh, most high level in housing okay but what we're currently experiencing it's people shooting straight to the higher office mm -hmm. you are not helping yourself you are delaying actually delaying yourself because ideally the people who need to resolve your issue are the ones e at the area level mm, mm. they know all the pros and cons and the challenges they have the answer and if you don't believe them you go there you still gonna get the same answer the same answer yeah yes okay. now we humbly ask our customers to please follow the escalation process correctly okay yes all right um something that i don't actually know much about something called the K KRN. Yes. Yeah. What is that? How does it work? KRN is Key Revision Number. It okay. stands for that. Yeah. And it's a project that started last year. Mm -hmm. And it call it has got an end date which is supposed to be November 2024. Okay. It's a it's a project that we are running nationwide to encode meters. All the meters by uh, end of november should be encoded all of them yeah because if your meter has not been encoded it won't be able to accept any token okay and all you right. will battle i now hear a lot of people struggling with that now, yes how, how how do they fix this i've bought at um electricity and yes. i'm trying to punch these numbers in and this meter is not receiving or accepting these numbers how should they sort those out Okay, first, if your meter is not yet encoded, because we've tried to push mm. uh, from last year, because as much as the national uh, target date is November, mm. our provincial date that we've put is yeah. by June. Okay. If your meter is still not yet encoded, mm. you will receive a 40 digit when you buy electricity. Yeah. This is what will happen. You'll go buy and you'll be surprised and say, Oh wow! Did they give me more electricity mm, or what? Mm, mm. No, it's not more electricity. Okay. Now you need to follow the steps. How so? You 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 punch the first uh, uh, twenty digits, and then make it a point that uh, they go through. Then you come and punch 
the next one yeah up until you 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 then the third one it will be then your actual uh, token yeah token that okay. you you have received it's not a set of three tokens no it's that step and it okay. should be done in sequence okay don't and just punch the whole thing no in. it's 20 if 20, 20, 20. Yeah, okay and if somehow during the process you you battling mm. that's when then you can then uh, uh, contact alfred or the contact center or any of the uh, uh, self uh, service channels we are able to then uh, uh, guide you what we also doing is to dispatch people because we are monitoring mm. areas that should have already done that mm. as a self-service and we we can see on the system how many uh, maybe customers uh, have been converted how many have received mm. the 40 digits yeah but haven't done it yeah then we help it like we help you to do it yourself okay yes okay. but I, I because instead of doing it yourself mm. not doing it then we we dispatch somebody to go and assist you okay but uh, now I, I still get lost on yes how do you get the 40 digits when you go and buy electricity okay automatically if in a certain area, mm. we said uh, we are loading yeah. in that area. Yeah. Then you you will then you you slept today, still being uh, under the old SGC. It's a supply group code. Yeah. Then tomorrow when you wake up, you wake up. It's different. It's because we would have loaded. All right. Yes, meaning sort of we would have activated in that area. Yeah. Then when you buy automatically, you will then receive the numbers. Okay. Yes. Okay. It makes sense. It yes. makes sense. I'm not sure if we covered anything on, on especially on that one of the um, the, the recording number, um, mm. so that customers can. I've I've had the questions before, and I didn't actually have answers for it. Yes. But yeah, I'm glad that it's. I, I hope that it's explained to the fullest. And I don't know. I will. This is one of the times that I will give people on the floor, <laughs> our producers and stuff to actually ask if they have any question or anything like that no one okay all right i, I believe people love and understand how it's common but as in season don't be i'm very very happy that you are here and that you clarified that for us and yes. uh, if probably customers can understand that you are going now paperless and mm. going online and making things easier and people can get on but now, your words to your customers, anything? As, as always, um, yeah. once again, thank you so much uh, uh, for having me mm. and always uh, giving us an opportunity to engage with customers. Mm. To our customers at home, the key is always, uh, please buy electricity. Mm. You know, we, 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 we can't do without your contribution. It makes a huge difference. And um, I know uh, people are anxious because we are heading towards uh, the end of financial year and soon we'll be having new price increase. And I believe in the next um, a show, I will try and cover that and take you through how many units you buy for a certain amount of time with uh, the new prices. And thank you to all the customers who are buying electricity. We really appreciate because you're helping us uh, to keep the lights burning. And for those who are still consumers, we are appealing that please, there's still time for you to make a change. You can change the way you are doing things and become a customer so that you make a good contribution to our economy. Thank you so much. Okay, so in the space of a month, we show Kavana Mina now. Yes. <laughs> because of our prices. <laughs> yes. And unfortunately, it affects all of us. <laughs> Including you. <laughs> Including myself, yes. Okay, one of those. Well, thank you very much for watching the show. We really appreciate it. As I said, please, let's share, like, and distribute so that uh, as many people can get this message and, and know about it. More than anything else, um, I'd like to encourage this trend in, in our shows. Please, let's comment on the bottom. If you have another questions, post your question in the bottom. I will try my level best. As we get Austin Dombi here on studio, we will get Austin Dombi to get on her phone or her colleagues to be answering those questions online. Mm -hmm. So please comment uh, and then uh, leave your questions there. 
Alcine Tombi will answer those questions or anyone from the department answer those questions, Silva Nizona, especially pertaining to this particular show. From me, Rasen Mishimushala and uh, Alcine Tombi from ESCOM. Uh, cheers, till next time.